But now, would you please welcome to the stage the IOD's chief economist, Graham Leach. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, we heard from Dan Cobley about Google X and how you can transform an organization thinking not in terms of 10% better, but 10 times better. And this afternoon, I want to apply that to the economy. How can we make the economy 10 times better? We can build the Rocket Wars economy. What does the IOD mean by that? It's quite simple. It's quite simple. If you look around the world economy today, I'll pose you one simple question. 20 years from now, will the UK economy look more like Detroit or Dubai? Will it look like the economy we saw this morning, fast growing, British brands which dominate the world, success stories all over the place, the private sector leading the way. Or will it look more like Detroit, where in the somewhat extreme words of one recent commentator, the state parasite devoured the host. Controversial words. But can those words be applied to the UK? Controversial though they may be. Well, look at Detroit. It wasn't so long ago that Detroit had the highest per capita incomes in the United States. But where there were once the highest per capita incomes, there are now literally tens of thousands of vacant buildings and absent jobs. Where there were once 13 car plants, there is now one. So you might say, is that just a story of auto industry decline? I would suggest maybe not. The auto industry has flourished elsewhere in the United States. It's thrived elsewhere. And other centers of the United States with single industry dependence, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, they've reorientated, they've rebuilt, they've restructured. I would argue that the fundamental cause of decline in Detroit was excess statism and that if we don't watch out, that will swamp the UK economy as well. But that debate is absent at the present time. The economic policy debate in the UK is all about austerity. Actually, austerity isn't that austere. Public spending is only falling by less than 1% per annum. Tell me a business that think that's austere. But in the UK, the debate is all about the short term. How can we boost demand in the economy? How can we boost spending? We're missing the fundamental issue, which is what is the impact of the state on the incentives to work, to save, and to invest in the long term. We've got to stop thinking about spending and we've got to start thinking about competitiveness because that's where the future wealth and success of UK companies will lie. We can't think about just borrowing and spending our way out of this. We've got to compete our way out of this. And that is the opportunity we face. We've seen the global challenges this morning. We've just heard Jack Welch talking about them. But the global challenges have a flip side. The other side of the balance sheet is the global opportunity. The world economy is going to expand in the coming decades at a rate and at a level that we just cannot envisage. That is the opportunity. Are we going to take our share? Are we going to maximize the private sector to strive 
to thrive, to innovate, and to seize that opportunity. At the moment, we're thinking about the short term. Really, all the debate should reside in the long term. If you look at the UK's performance over recent decades, 10 years ago, if you'd asked the Treasury if the then Chancellor would have stood at that podium, he would have said the underlying growth rate of the UK economy, the potential growth rate, what you guys can realise in the longer term, would have been almost 3% per annum. If you ask the Treasury or the OBR 10 years on, they'll say 2%, maybe a bit less. And if you look at a stack of reports which are piled on my desk, you'd also see rather pessimistic forecasts about where we might be less than a decade from now because of the damage that's been done to the economy through the, wealth, through the growth of the state, through the undermining of the financial sector, and due to a loss of dynamism. We need to regain that. And this morning, all the corporate examples we saw show that we can regain that, but the private sector needs to be bigger. In the 21st century, we cannot compete at a world level with a state the size we do have today. And if you reach 2020 with that 1% potential growth rate, you are in problem territory. Because at that level, the borrowing costs you have far exceed your rate of growth in GDP. And then you're going to have to rein back the state viciously in order to pay your way in the world. We need to take the right decisions now to avoid a crisis later. So how do we go about tackling this? Well, the IOD published a paper last year called How to Build the Rocket Balls Economy. There were a whole host of issues we addressed there on the supply side of the economy. But we've compressed them into four for this afternoon. The first one is the size of the state. There is a clear trade-off. In the longer term, a smaller government means a faster growing economy. And the numbers are very powerful there. We think a fall in the size of the state of 10 percentage points of GDP, 45 to 35, can add up to one percentage point to the GDP growth rate. That is a big change. It's not rocket science. If you move resources from a lower growth productivity area to a higher growth productivity area, you'll increase your growth rate. It's not rocket science. And the numbers add up to something very substantial in the long term. The difference between an economy growing at 1% and 3% over working life, that's the equivalent of pushing off Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland into the North Atlantic. Some of you might want to do that. But actually, that is the size of output loss. That is the lost output. That is the ultimate stealth tax. That is the loss of all that output which we could have had but will never have because the incentives to work, save and invest are not there. An economy growing at 1% per annum takes more than seven decades to double in size. An economy growing at 3% per annum takes little more than 20, two decades, little more than 20 years. That is the prize, that is the opportunity that lies before us. But it's not just the scale of tax and spend that we need to address. It's the nature of the tax system as well. The IOD, in conjunction with the Taxpayers Alliance, published our 2020 Tax Commission report last year. That sets out a feasible pathway to the most dynamic, growth-enhancing, tax-efficient economy in the world. We can get there. Think Google X. Don't think 10% better, think radically better. We can do that. And those two changes, shrinking the state and at the same time simplifying the tax system, can have a dramatic effect in the longer term. But it's not just that. It's also total intervention in the economy. We know the regulatory and employment law burdens. We know as well the planning burdens, ridiculous planning burdens. We're having a debate about a third runway 
at Heathrow when we should be having a debate about a fourth runway. Now, the idea supported more infrastructure spending as well. But if you look at some of the decisions we're making, we're pushing in the wrong direction. We're building some things which we shouldn't be doing, and we're ignoring those which we should be. And as somebody joked with me at lunchtime today, to spend £50 billion on HS2, you might as well knock down Birmingham and build it 20 minutes closer to London, and you can do it for less than £50 billion. <laughs> but it's also about expanding competition. And it's not just competition in the public sector. We would argue strongly that we need more competition in the private sector. Big investment banks too big to fail know that they're too big to fail and that has consequences. Metro Bank, the first new high street bank in a century. Was the financial crisis caused by too much capitalism? Or well, maybe it was caused by too little. We need more competition, but not just in the private sector, in the public sector as well. In the two most important areas of our lives, our children's future and our health, those sectors remain dominated by public sector monopoly provision. It's unbelievable in the 21st century when we have choice up and down the high street in all manner of goods and services, and yet in the two most important areas of our lives we remain wedded to public sector monopoly provision. That is not sustainable. And so, we need to carve out a new economy. We need to carve out an economy where, quite simply, the private sector is much, much bigger. And if we do that, if we shrink the state, if we expand the private sector, if we unleash market forces, we can build the rocket balls economy. Business can yet help Britain rule the world. Let's build the Rocket Balls economy. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, your Chief Economist, Graham Leach.